Hey folks, Dust here to discuss another roster move as we close 2018 and head into the new year of 2019. And that is, of course, Complexity having officially added Rike to their roster. And they have nothing standing in. And this is after they had removed, of course, Ye and Android not so long ago. And so we knew that they needed to get some members in. It had already been reported that Ricky was on his way. And so that uh, it's been confirmed. And then, yeah, nothing comes in as a stand-in. At least that's how it's being reported on all outlets that I've seen. And even in the official announcement that Complexity made on Twitter was that he'd be standing in through the major. Now, I don't know if all things work out from both parties, if they would be willing to sign nothing for time to the team long term if things go well at the major and, and then lead up to the major or if nothing would even be open to wanting to do something like that i mean he obviously can be very successful just you know being a streamer a content creator a desk analyst and, and whatever really he wants to do in the industry i'm sure he could find a lot of success so i'm not sure if being a, a, a full-time player again is even something he really wants to do now or if he would want to do it in the future so i'm going to treat it obviously as him just standing in and so therefore i'm not really going to maybe heavily analyze or critique or whatever this move of nothing playing for complexity i'll make a separate video if in fact it comes out that he becomes a permanent member and really break it down at that point but i'm really going to focus more then on did complexity to make moves was adding ricky the right move was the players they removed the right players to remove and are they doing the right thing by using a stand-in temporarily until they can really find like a, a full-time fit that really fits the team and then, you know, analyze, you know, what Ricky can do for complexity going forward. That's really going to be my focus on this video because of the whole sand situation. So, first off, did complexity need to make a move? Yes, definitely needed to make a move. I mean, outside of the minor leading up to the face at major and the face at major itself, complexity has really struggled throughout a lot of this year. I mean, they were decent enough online. Like, they were always in the mix with some of the other middle of the pack North American teams like a Rogue, like an E United you know, like maybe even a luminosity to a degree, you know, they, they were always in the mix with these teams and, you know, fighting against them in qualifiers, they were able to beat teams like rogue and E United, uh, and even energy, uh, to, to make it to the major through, through the face of America's minor. And even when they were qualifying for dream hack summer earlier in the year, they were able to, you know, beat teams like United rogue to qualify for that. And then they were essentially in the middle of the pack in the pro leagues as well. I mean, they missed out on playoffs for both ECS and EPL, but they were right on the cusp of it. I mean, at ECS, I think they ranked number six. So they were two places away, I guess, for making the land playoffs for that tournament. And then for EPL, I think they were ranked number nine. So that put them what i think they took the top six uh this time around when that's kind of been the case for for a while now for epl so i mean safely away from relegation but again not really a playoff threat in epl at least they were pretty far off in ecs they were kind of close so yeah they were hovering around the middle of the pack but definitely not really you know qualifying for playoffs like they would have wanted to and, and there were several land events they weren't able to qualify for this year as well you know not making stockholm not making you know ESL one new york um you know not making dreamhack valencia again at these different qualifiers teams like united were getting the better of them like at the valencia qualifier uh new york they actually came really close to qualifying they actually came second to energy and they actually had beaten luminosity and swole patrol and renegades and things like that so uh you know that was pretty good now that the stockholm event for dreamhack masters they wound up getting beat out by ghost and e united so again kind of back and forth in the united a little bit and just kind of further illustrating that they were really just kind of scrapping around the middle of pack of north america and online play then when it came to land play i mean Again, outside of the minor and the major, there's really not a whole lot there. I mean, you know, at DreamHack Austin, they went out 0-3. You know, they they lost the opening best of one and lost the elimination best of three. And then elimination best of three, they lost to Optic, which, of course, the, the, was the, the crazy story because this is right after Stan and Shazam had left Optic to join Complexity pretty much. And Optic beat them in a landslide. It wasn't even close at DreamHack Austin earlier this year when they played against each other. And that pattern, you know, even kind of fought a little bit later. I mean, at DreamHack Summer, they lost to Optic again in the best of one. Uh, the, the best of one that would have promoted them right into the playoffs because they won their opening best of one against Renegades in, in a really strong fashion. But then they lose to Optic very one-sided, and then they wind up losing a best of three to Gambit. So, again, two DreamHack open events in a row they got in the group stages. Then it got even worse whenever they went to that Zotac Americas final where they actually got beat in the opening best of three against uh, Furia, the Brazilian team. Uh, unbelievable that they would lose this. You would think that they surely should be able to handle this, and, and then they couldn't. But then they do take care of business and make the minor. And then at the minor, we already kind of talked about it, they did really well. I mean, the only series they lost was one to Rogue early uh, in the tournament, you know, after, you know, getting through the groups really with no problem. 
They were able to beat Energy in an upset fashion. They're opening best of three in the tournament after, you know, our opening best of three, I guess, at the playoff section of that tournament. And then we're able to beat United and Rogue to, you know, make it. And ultimately, you know, actually win the minor and get that additional bit of prize money and get that additional bit of, you know, accolade, I guess you could say, to it. Uh, then once at the major, again, did fine. I mean, they lost the opening best of one of the challenger states to Astralis. Fair enough. But then they swept from that point forward, beating Space Soldiers big and Vega Squadron. Then in the Legend stage, they go 3-0. They're one of the 3-0 teams, which no one really expected. You know, beating Fnatic, beating G2, beating big. And then they wound up losing in a pretty one-sided fashion they made in Brazil uh, in the quarterfinals. And then we're thinking, okay, you know, this is a sign that complexity is on the rise. But hold the phone because they went to Star Ladder. They went out 0-3 in that best of one Swiss system, including losing the teams they were able to beat in the past, like a Renegades, like a Big. So this was a really uh, tough shot to just be your immediate offline follow-up to the face at Major and just not really be able to do much. At CS Summit, they had kind of a... I would say neutral performance at best certainly didn't gain any ground really it, it, it was still kind of part of the downward trajectory i guess you could say i mean they did have a couple of best of three victories over g2 and heroic which i mean g2 we already know the struggles that they've been having but getting a best of three victory over heroic is actually a, a pretty decent shout they've actually been a pretty decent team even through all their roster changes but again just lose two best of threes to optic which for whatever reason could ever beat that team despite all of optic struggles head-to-head -head complexity they took a map off of them one of the best of threes they played but in general just couldn't get anything done then at dreamhack atlanta this was a little bit better performance they actually didn't make a top four finish because they won the two opening best of ones they played against envy and e united granted beating envy in a best of one offline at this point in time didn't really add much stock to you i mean envy has really really struggled and uh, then you know they really had to fight tooth and nail to beat e united at this this was like a double overtime victory so really close and then they wound up losing to vitality in the semifinals they did take the opening map but then lost the next two and the two maps they lost against vitality weren't even competitive so even though it's a top four finish to me, it still wasn't super impressive. I guess it was like taking care of business, so to speak. But again, you didn't really gain any ground here. You kind of just sat neutral. I guess kind of similar to what CS Summit was for them. And then DreamHack Winter was obviously their last event together before they decided to remove Android and yay. And this was a massive disappointment. Didn't even make it out of the groups. And it's because they lost a best of three to Existence Galaxy, a Swedish team that really hadn't done much up until this event. Many of their players have been playing CS for many years and haven't really done a whole hell of a lot over the years. So this was a really disappointing loss. And I think this is what really prompted them to to make the moves that they did so let's talk about the players that they removed what were these the right choices so the first one is yay that's the first player who gets removed the first one i think in chronological order that got announced and you know what i could understand why he got removed he definitely was having his struggles he had his moments at the major that's for sure uh, had a really good run there you know a lot of people were, were high on him because of his youth and because some of his you know skill level uh, just you know, the skill ceiling that he had but at the end of the day you know coming into complexity he wasn't a very experienced player not really a seasoned player by any stretch of imagination when you compare it to some of the other players out there uh, who play offline I mean, complexity was essentially the first team he ever really played offline with outside of playing like some smaller stuff like fragadelphia with some you know semi-pro level teams i guess you could say so i mean really all of his cs true experience does come from his times of complexity and again you know there was definitely some high marks for him like he was super good at the america's minor leading up to the face at major i mean he was an absolute monster there again he had his ones at the major itself but yeah really did seem to struggle otherwise and so i could understand that you know his lack of experience his kind of falling off an individual level i can understand why these were, were reasons why you would consider removing him especially because he was in a role that kind of set him up to be like one of the stars of the team so to speak i mean he was one of the like entry type riflers for the team one of the guys more involved in creating plays and making openings and trying to be that flashy star level player so when you're in that type of role which is the role that you really need to produce from that kind of even adds another factor to it to why you would want to make a decision to to replace him so i can understand this one uh, why, why Ye would, would have to get dropped here. And I you know, wish him the best in his future. I think he still is young enough and you know has a little bit of experience on his belt now. Maybe he has to take a step down first and then kind of play his way back up. But I think there's still you know hope for this, for this guy. Um, but yeah, I can understand why Complexity thought maybe to part ways with him. Now, the next player they removed is actually Android. Now, this was a little bit of a shock to me. I mean, certainly Android has had his struggles. There's no doubt about that. Um, did struggle at that Starlighter event they won 03 out at. Did struggle at DreamHack Winter, you know, where they, they got eliminated by Assistance Galaxy. He, he's had his other events where, he, you know, he ha has had his issues as well. Um, though I would say at the Major, he was quite good. 
through a lot of that. The America's Minor, he was quite good through a lot of that. Um, oftentimes, I've seen him usually being a pretty, like, stable player. You know, and he's been around the complexity organization for a really long time. He's, like, one of the long-standing members because, obviously, people like Stanislaw and Shazam were more recent additions. Him and Def were, like, the two guys that had actually been around for a while uh, with all the other players that had kind of been removed over the past couple of years and, and all these different rosters complexity has fielded. So this was a bit surprising to me because I would have thought – that Android was a better performer than Def, in my opinion. And at times, they could play somewhat similar roles. Like, I know Def kind of got used as almost an entry player alongside Ye through a lot of their major run. But when they made the adjustments post-major, when they were struggling at some events, you could see Def kind of go back to the edge of the map. You know, Stanislaw Law was much more active. He was much more engaged, kind of helping create openings alongside Ye, alongside Shazam's AWP. And Android and Def kind of became the peripheral role players, so to speak, kind of taking solo positions. Maybe you could even consider them some more supportive type players, you know, depending on how you use that definition of the word. So I would have thought that, you know, Android would have made more sense to keep than Def because of that. But with that said, I can't know what intangibles Def brings to the table that you know maybe increases his stock value for the team you know maybe he helps secondary calling maybe he helps with mid-round calling maybe he helps design their strats and scout opponents with their coach and with Stanislaw you know maybe he helps boost morale on the team maybe he helps facilitate communication you know I can't know what elements he brings to the team other than what I see in demos when I watch their games or, or what have you um, from that perspective, I would have thought that Android probably brought a little bit more value as far as fragging capability uh, and things of that nature compared to Def. But if, for whatever reason, they think Def is worth keeping for now for whatever other contributions he has. And he's had his moments. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think he's a much better player for complexity since they finally had a true in-game leader. The brief stint with Finesse, what they've had with Stannis Law. He's definitely looked to be a stronger player for complexity than you know, maybe some of his time with the team like back in 2016 and 2017. I think that this year has been a step up from him individually, but even still, I think Android was a better performer. So I don't know if this was the right move or not, to be honest. I personally, if it was like me, you know, with the information I have to work with, I would have thought, you know, you keep Android instead of Def, but you know, that's the decision that they decided to make. And so now we have to talk about, you know, what they're bringing into the team. Because um, first off, the foundation of this team is indeed that Stannis Law is a really solid in-game leader and a really strong fragging in-game leader. I mean, I think he's probably like of the active in-game leaders from North America right now since, you know, some players don't compete anymore. I mean, I really think the best in-game leaders right now are Nitro on Liquid, Dats on Energy, Steel on Ghost, and then Stannis Law on Complexity. I mean, I think that, you know, you have one of the better in-game leaders you're going to be able to get. And if you think about fragging capability, I mean... I think Stanislaw is a better fragger than Dats, for instance. I think he's kind of comparable to someone like Nitro as far as fragging capability. Though, obviously, Nitro does a little bit, you know, of opping, whereas Stanislaw doesn't really do that. So, there's definitely some differences in, like, roles that they play within their team. But, yeah, I mean, I think Stanislaw is right up there. I mean, that's a good piece to have. I think Shazam's a good piece to have as an opper. I mean, he's not like a superstar crazy level opper, but he's a pretty good opper. And when you think about kind of the lack of oppers we have in North America right now. I mean, Nitro's doing out of necessity on Liquid. Energy, you know, imported a European player to be their uh, AWP player. Cloud9 has Unimatic doing it kind of out of necessity. Not that he's bad at it, but I mean, that's not his main role. He hasn't really done it much in his career. He's kind of just doing it now because of all the roster chaos over there on Cloud9. Yeah, but when you really look through the line, I mean, there's Cooper finally getting a chance on EU United. We'll see what he turns out to be, you know, but I think it's still too early to call how good Cooper's really going to be at a top, you know, professional level because he's really just getting his first chance there. And, and I mean, yeah, there's just not many other names from North America that are operas right now that compete at a top professional level. So Shazam's actually pretty good to have. I think he gets his numbers. And I think one of the underrated values about Shazam is that he actually is pretty good with rifles. I mean, when they run five rifle setups on T-side, he can be one of the guys that helps create openings with an AK-47. He's definitely a capable rifler, whereas maybe other operas in the NA scene have really struggled in that regard, like a JDM, if you want to go back in history. And he's actually back now on Envy, so it's actually a current thing you can even talk about. Uh, I mean, outside of Shazam, it, uh, true North American operas, it, it's really, like, nifty. We'll see what Cooper can do. Yeah, I mean, there's just not many names. So, yeah, again, Shazam, definitely not a bad player to have. So th those are two good foundational pieces for this team to build off of, I really think. And I mean, again, Death, I I'm kind of, I'm a little bit more critical of him than, you know, maybe others might be. But, you know, 
whatever. I mean, maybe he can be a supportive element for the scene going forward. And so it's really just about what two players they had. Because to me, I think you need superstar level players to join this team. Guys who can bring a lot of consistent firepower because that's what this team really lacks outside of Stan's Law and Shazam. Outside of Stan's Law and Shazam, no one consistently fragging this team. That's just the straight up truth. Uh, even I, me saying I would say keep Android, he had his struggles too, you know. So I think bringing in consistent firepower is a really important thing to do. And I think Ricky does indeed bring that. So we'll talk about Ricky joining the team. I think this dude is really good. When he, you know, kind of left rent CLG, excuse me, and, and that, you know, project kind of flopped, I thought that like a Cloud9 should have been looking at Ricky to bring in as a primary opper if indeed you were going to replace Skadoodle, which of course Skadoodle wants up leaving the team much later, but they could have made that move much earlier. I think Ricky would have been a valid candidate to move over to Cloud9 and be an opera. I think he was that good. I, I think he really could have been a huge upgrade for, for Cloud9 at that point in time, and, and really many other North American teams probably could have used his opping services, but he winds up on Rogue after sitting out for a little while even stood in for splice for a brief moment at that you know epl relegation tournament and you know he only wound up playing like three total lands for rogue i think like austin atlanta and then uh the americas minor the major qualifiers so i guess four lands with rogue uh, when you add it all up. So didn't really have a whole lot of land play with Rogue, to be 100% honest. And he was still a pretty good player. I mean, I guess he kind of struggled a little bit at, uh, you know, the major qualifier in, in DreamHack Atlanta, but he was already kind of on his way out when it came to DreamHack Atlanta, I guess you could say. Um, but definitely a really valuable piece for Complexity to have. For one, he's going to add a consistent, strong, secondary opping threat that Complexity did not have before Ricky joined this team. When they run double out setups now with Shazam and Ricky, they are going to be really powerful, you know, particularly on CT side setups and things of that nature. So he's going to add that factor right away. And that's already a huge step up from whatever double out they were running before. I think Ricky's going to be a huge upgrade there. And look, I think Ricky is a pretty good aggressive rifler for the team, like an entry, secondary entry type player. I think that he could be much more consistent in that role than someone like Ye. So if you're thinking of him as a direct replacement for Ye, I think he is a much better player in almost every regard than Ye. More, you know, experienced, more capable of consistently performing, has that secondary opping threat that I think is much more powerful than any secondary opping A might have done at, at any point in time, which I don't think he really did it that much. Um, kind of escapes me right now, top of my head, but I, I feel like I don't re see him doing it that much. Maybe a couple of different maps he might do it on CT side. So yeah, in, in every way, I think Ricky is, is a really solid piece to have. Uh, he's still not really going to probably be a superstar level player, but he's definitely still going to be an upgrade and definitely should bring value to this team in a couple of different ways. So I really like this pickup of Ricky, by the way. I think Rogue's silly for letting this player go away, especially if Tinsky winds up being their new fifth. But that's, you know, a topic for a separate video if that winds up happening, if I ever talk about Rogue in a video, whenever they decide to make their move or what have you. Now, when it comes to the fifth position, you know, again, nothing standing in for now. So I don't want to, like, overly analyze that because if it's just temporary, I just don't really see much point in doing so. I mean, I think that nothing's obviously a very experienced player, obviously a very flexible player, obviously a guy who can help with the morale of the team, uh, can help bring ideas, can do his job. I mean, he's not going to be like a superstar level frag or anything like that. Um, but yeah, definitely could be a guy that's going to be fine for a stand-in position. Again, if he winds up being a permanent member of the team, I'll do a separate video and actually truly analyze who nothing is, what he can bring to the team, things of that nature. But again, I really wanted to focus more on what complexity's issues were, if they needed to make a change, did they make the right changes, and is Ricky a good addition, and kind of break down all of that. When it, when it comes down to it, I just really want to see how the team is configured now. Because I think what you have to do, you should probably have like nothing play like a solo role, like let him play the edge of the map. That's what Death's probably going to do as well. So I think your entry duo is probably going to be like a Stannis Law and Ricky. And then Shazam's going to be, obviously, your opera. Like, that's how I would probably set up the team at this point. I mean, Stan's Law has always been really flexible. But there were points in time on Optic where he was kind of entry fragging with guys like Rush and Tarek. There's been points in time in his career where he's been more of a lurker. He seems to have, like, a really good intuition, you know, uncanny ability to know exactly when he can flank or push around or make a move. This is also the case on CT sides, certain, like, small side anchor positions he had played in his past, like enter on train, really good at knowing when he could flank through ladder or make a push in the brown halls and get a kill and fade back. Really good at timings and really smart at being able to play the edge of the map. So he definitely can do that. I think that's what gives complexity a lot of flexibility on who they might recruit as their permanent fifth. And because I think Stannis Law can really kind of play around it. If you wind up getting an entry fragger or something like that, then you can just pair that guy up with Ricky and then Stannis Law can kind of play the edge of the map. Or if you want to get a more kind of edge in the map rifler to be like a really strong edge of the map player, um, 
I'm not going to say they're going to recruit this guy, but like, let's say someone like what Ethan's be able to do for energy at times or, or something like that. Then yeah, Santa's law can kind of entry with Ricky. And then you, you let that guy play his comfort on the edge of the map or something like that. So I think that's one of the great options for uh, complexity going forward is that, is that they can do that. And let's say they want to make nothing kind of an entry fragger with Ricky in, in a temporary uh, situation that they're in with him right now. I guess that's a possibility, but yeah, I really think that, you know, you could treat Stanislaw almost like a glaive, like, you know, like an entry fragger, an in in-game leader combo who actually can frag pretty well, has shown in the past that he can play that role, has kind of been doing that for complexity most recently since Steph kind of moved more to the edge of the map after the major. So, yeah, I mean, I think that there's a couple of different ways you can set up this team with Stanislaw's flexibility that this team can succeed. But again, it's all going to come down in the end, long term, to who that fifth is going to be. Imagine if this team did snag Tarek. You know, that's definitely, you know, something they were trying to do. They were very open about trying to get Tarek. If they could have done that before the major, that would have been a huge move for Complex. They would have really risen up the ranks, in my opinion, and really shown a lot of potential because you could have had a situation where Tarek and Ricky were your entry duo. Stanislaw's a powerful player on the edge of the mat that's a good fragging in game leader. You know, that's more of a supportive factor, and you have Shazam as an opera. Or you could have had, like, either Tarek or Ricky play the edge of the map if they feel more comfortable doing that. And then you still have Stanislaw as an entry fragger alongside whichever one isn't playing the edge you know between ricky and Tarek, that would have been massive for t sides and they would have had a lot of firepower on ct side they still would have had the strong double op of ricky and shazam you would have brought in Tarek. you would have got Tarek into a role that suits him better instead of making him you know play kind of crummy positions for made in brazil and deal with you know ridiculous communication issues and things like that you could have gotten him back in a role that suits him he could have been the star player for your team like they're in need of star power Tarek could have been that star player for them so if that can eventually work out in the long term, that would be huge. But yeah, I do think that what's probably best for this team is looking for the permanent fifth slot to be kind of a star level rifler, no matter what role he's going to play. Because again, Sands Law is going to be flexible. I think that's going to be the right choice. If you're going to keep nothing, personally, I would keep him like over death and I would still look for a star level player just to make sure you have enough true firepower to really compete against some of these elite teams. So I'm going to leave it at that for now until we get more confirmation on who Complexity's permanent fifth long term might be. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please follow subscribe for more content. Thanks so much and catch you next time.